Let's have a look at a quick overview of how we will be proceeding. There are four steps involved. Um, I'll go through them quickly one by one. Uh, the step one, it's uh, the general setup where we create the tabs, the resource list and uh, some dates. The step two, uh, we create the task list. That's a main list, um, but we don't do any formattings yet. Uh, the step three, uh, we do the formatting and uh, formatting is quite important as um, as you've noticed and then we finally we do some uh, pretty graphics we try to have everything better looking that's obviously depending on test but I will have a go at it and then you can change it if you don't like it first thing to do is to create three different tabs the first one we will call it dashboard the second one we will call resourcing and the third one we will call calculation we create and rename calculations here you go now to get us started we will be creating a resource list resource task number of tasks total working days what is done when what is left to be done so just to get us started, all this will be calculated later on, but we just create the skeleton of the list. So we can create some uh, some names, we can input some names. So I'm just going to, I don't want to spend too much time typing and explaining at the same time. So I'm just uh, cheating a little bit. I'm just copying some uh, and I'm just going to copy the format as well. So I just create some here um, and I, I, I like to remove the grids. So that's something that, um, that personal preference. But like everything with this, um, with these spreadsheets that I do is what I like to do is just create a very generous amount of, of uh, rows. I use the data grouping and this way I can remove them and the likes. So this tab will be used mainly to for us to check that the resource is in our resource list, the type of validation, uh, if you like, but will be also used to create um, the graphs that we have on the resourcing. So all those fields here will be calculated. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to put a bit of formatting here, just to everything consistent. So that's it. So we've done the resourcing tab. So for our next step, we'll be going to uh, the dashboard and we will be creating just a few fields here. I'm just going to going to copy them uh, directly. So this is it. Uh, I've created uh, four fields. So this is where we input some parameters. So at today, we use the Excel function today. So this is easy. And I will, uh, and this is the red flag days. It's the amount of days that we decide. Um, it's a bit of a tolerance, if you like. You would say it's okay for us to be late by two to three days, for instance. But from five days, we don't like it. We put a red flag on it. So this is where I put here five days. I would put five days. I can put a little bit of a formatting here. I will be format the cells. And what I like to do is just create my own. So I will just leave the number here and I will put days like this. And that will tell me five days. And then the red flag date then is calculated based on this. So what we take is we take today and we subtract five days. So I took that date and I subtracted five days. And then this will be the, the date that will be driving our red flag. The deadline will be calculated later because we need to um, have a look at all the all the tasks. The deadline will be the latest of all the tasks that will be listing there. Now, what I like to do with those dates to make sure that everybody understands them, even if you wherever you are in the world, is I, I like to to format those dates in such a way that you know there's no month before day or day um, after month. So I just give it something consistent. So I'm just going to put some letters instead. So I'll just put Tuesday uh, and the month. So there's three days to, to say I want the letters, and two days just to say I want the numbers, and then the month in full letter. So this way, and I copy this formatting uh, to the next one, and uh, I actually can copy the formatting here for this one. Next, I will be creating the table. So the table, um, 
it can be you know to start with you just can put it wherever you like um, I'm just going to put it on on row 10 um, and, and I'm just going to copy um, I'm just going to copy it. So this is what you, you would have to start with. So I'm just going to explain each field. So this is, uh, so I've, I've decided to have two, two tasks, two groups of tasks. So I've decided to have two groups of tasks, just, uh, but it's not monetary. You could have just one group of tasks. Um, but I thought it could be useful if you want to have several groups. Um, the who's on it is another way to, to say resourcing. You can call it resourcing instead. The work required, this is where you would decide how many days or hours or whatever are required, actually, by the way. I've, I've said days, but it could be hours or, or, or weeks or months. Uh, the deadline, so this is when you want this task to be completed. So it's hard-coded. You say, well, I want this to be finished by that date. The percentage completed, so this is where we, you, you will be putting your updates. How much of the percentage completion is done? I know on another Excel, I said I don't like percentage completed. I, I, I prefer to put days outstanding. But for this one, just to add a bit of variety, and it seems to be the more the norm, I just uh, go back to the percentage completed. And then the status will be calculated. So you, you don't need this field. This will be calculated. And uh, we will have another field later on, which is the amount of work done that would be calculated as well. So here what you can do, you can create your, your task list. Just create your task list uh, as big as you want. Uh, and uh, as before, what I like to do is to uh, hide the data. This is where I like to, to hide what, what is not useful really here. Now we have this uh, completed. The only thing that we need to do is to make sure that this field here is validated. So we go into data, data validation, and we put a low settings, a low list. And here as a source, we click on the, on the source and we go here and we just give all this colon here. So this way, when a data needs to be input in this, then i um, just going to remove the, re remove the rest, copy the rest all the way through. So now when you want to put something in this, it would, it would ask you to verify it's one of those. So the validation is here, is done here. So I've just added a few tasks here to save you the, the hassle of seeing me typing. Now, the next thing we can do is to make things a little bit more, to make the formulas a little bit clearer, is to name some uh, columns here. So what, uh, uh, there are several ways to doing it, but um, the easiest way probably is just to select the column like this, and then uh, directly input in this field here, the name uh, that you want to associate to, to, this, uh, to this group of, of uh, cells, if you like. So here, for instance, here, this is, I will call it task name. And after we can go under formula, name manager, to check if the named range is here. So it's here, so that seems good. So we do the same with, uh, with this one. We call it resource. Do the same with this one, work required. Next one, we call it deadline. Next one, completion. And the next one, status. So what I'm added, I'm going to name a couple of fields. So the same same principle to name field. I'm just going to call it this one today. I'm going to call this one red flag days, red flag days. And I will be calling this one red flag date. And then after what you can do, you go into name manager and you check if everything it looks okay here, and it does. So the work left is what has been done less what has been completed. So it's it's easy. It's just more or less you take um, the total work that was required and you subtract what has been completed. 
So what has been completed is requirement. Okay, so that should tell you, give you, and obviously this one. So this one, as it's a, it's a heading, uh, it's not required here. Um, you can apply the same formatting here if you if you wish. Uh, to do this, you apply the same formatting here. So does this work? Yes, hundred percent zero. Yes. And I will be calling this work lift. The deadline is the highest of all these tasks, more or less. So it's not the, the last task because the last task could be, you know, wh whatever date you want it to be. Um, it doesn't. Maybe it's not the the, the last ta task of a project. But the deadline is really the highest of all these dates. So how do we calculate this? So we just calculate it with using max in Excel. So you have max of all these dates here. And that gives us the 21st of December. And if we do check, yes, this is the, the highest here. Now let's have a look at the status fields. So this is one of the most complex calculations that we have to do. We are using the Excel formula called IFS. So this is relatively new. If you don't have the newer version of Excel, then you would have to do embedded IF. So it's, it's a little bit more painful, but you can do it uh, in the same way. You can have the same result. You can have the same outcome with it. So the first thing we check is we check is the task itself is completed. So how do we do that? Well, we check that we don't have one here, which, which means 100%. One, the number one means 100%. The second thing that we do is we check that there is actually something in this task. You know, if the task is empty like this one, we don't want to put any status into it. The third thing that we check is if the date is late. So when is the date late is when um, we have the deadline is in the past. So we are looking at a Tuesday and the deadline of this was yesterday. So that means that the task is late. We don't worry about the red flag yet. That will be um, for the formatting. If there is something in this uh, task name and the percentage completed is zero, so that means that the task, there is a task and it has not started yet. And if the completion is greater than zero, that means it's in progress. So as we have ruled out the completion of the first part here, then we can uh, say with confidence that if there is more than zero, the task is not completed um, and the task has started. And that's it. So I've copied this. Uh, so I've created it. And I'll just, just copy down across like this, this way, copy and paste. Um, across all the all the rows, and if it should stay blank, as we say, stay blank when there is no task name. There you go. So everything looks okay. Obviously, there's no formatting, so it doesn't look as good yet. But looks like all the all our status looks okay. If I just put something in the future, let's see, not started. Okay, if I put something here in progress. Very good. So we have. Um, we have done the biggest uh, job, which is to uh, calculate the, the status. Um, now we can um, have a focus on more the formatting. Now let's do a little bit of formatting. Now I'm just going to cover that up. So the first thing we want to format is we want to format every row that has started and every row that has completed. So let's select uh, the full table, uh, the heading, we don't really need it. Uh, we just take the full table here. We go into conditional formatting. We create a new rule and we check the percentage completion. So if the percentage completion here is equal to one, we want it to be green. So if we do that, the problem we'll have is that that we will color all the, the, the cells the same based on the value of that very cell here, the first one. So what we need to do in order to do that, we need to remove the block uh, that Excel has put on the first one. We just uh, remove the dollar in front of the number, so that will carry it across for every row. So let's check if that works. 
Yes, it does. Now we just need to do the same new rule for the tasks that have started. Same field, percentage completion, remove the dollar is greater than zero. We format third blue to go to the to the blue third. This is my, my, my choice. And then uh, you, you press OK. And what you have here is all the field the same. So there are two reasons for this. The first reason is we have created a group task here and this is doing it on everyone. So what we can do is we just reformat this one the, the, the same way. The second reason is when you have this, this problem with um, uh, conditional formatting, you go back into the manage rules and what you do is you change uh, the order of those. So now, now this is working uh, properly. So we, if you go back here, you know, you notice that by changing the other, I just do the completed first and after I do the other, and that makes more sense. Otherwise, it would just do all this and create everything all blue as we have seen. Now what we need to do is to format the status. We already have uh, some conditional formatting on, on these fields, if they are completed or if they are late or in progress. Now we want to highlight the one that are late and the one that are very late. So how do we know if some, something is late and very late? So we use the red flag here. So if we have uh, more than five days, if we're led by more than five days, we consider that this task, task should be red. And we use the deadline for this. So for instance, here, the two days, the 29th, if the task was due the 28th and is not completed, it's late. But if a task was due the 23rd of November or any date before that, and today's the 29th, then this is this is beyond the red flag. So therefore, we can say that uh, this uh, uh, task is red. So how do we do that? Let, let's just do the formatting. We select um, this colon here, go on conditional formatting, and we have three rules. We go back to the same process. We have three rules that we need to take into account. So as we have three rules, we, we put an uh, end condition here. So the first rule is the deadline here, this field here. We remove the dollar as usual. Must be smaller than this. Then we know we'll be red. If the deadline is beyond, but that's not sufficient. We also need to check that the task is not completed. So the task not completed, that means the task is different one. And then we need to make sure that the, the task is not blank. So um, I have I can do, do that just, just to um, use, if you want, the, the, the full power of Microsoft is not is blank. So is not blank. Um, we have uh, the task name here. I'm just going to put remove this and then we close all the parentheses and is red so we want this to be red so I find this red a bit aggressive here so what I like to do is to go into more colors and give it a bit of a more subtle red once again don't want to scare people off so what, what happens is the same as before here. Now, at least we know that he has selected this and it looks like he has put plenty in red. So is that correct? So the red flag is 24th of November here. Yes. And this is 23rd. So that's before the 24. And then that goes red. But if I put the change of deadline to 26th of November, yes, that's it. So he puts it back to the in progress. So that's good. So now let's, um, let's do the other. Let's do the amber. So we go back here, same principle, and actually I'm just going to go into manage rules here and I'm just going to copy this rule, duplicate rule. And, in, and then I will go back here. So what are the conditions for Ember? So now we are not looking at the red flag date. We're just looking at today's date. It's beyond today's date, so it's late. So we're going to put instead of 18, we put 16 here. 
and actually have named those fields. So I could have used um, the, the, the name field. So this will kind of give it a number color. Uh, a bit less aggressive, that's it. So now let's see how Excel is going to uh, give us that. So if we go back to our example here, if we if the deadline was the 20th of November, that's it, so it works. So uh, as I was mentioning, I, I named those fields. So what I could have done is uh, going back to the, to the formula manage rules here, what I could have done instead of seeing the 18, uh, 18 here, we could have put uh, the red flag date, red flag date otherwise you're gonna say Ben whoa, whoa, whoa. why did we bother creating this and and that's it and then we can do that for today's date for the ember it's two days um, we can remove today but as it's in a conditional formatting is maybe not not as important but just wanted to show you why we named those fields and that's it so that's it we've colored so we're starting to look a little bit uh, more like the finished product but we still ne need to put um, some graphics around it. Now let's format the percentage completion field. So in order to do this, what we need to do is to start with, we need to make sure that we are back to the default formatting. Um, otherwise the, the, the task, the progress bar is not going to show. So what we need to do is we need to ask two rules. The first one is um, if there is um, a completion somewhere, um, which means uh, the percentage complete is above zero, then we put back the initial color of our field. So as usual here, we, we need to make sure that we have those in the right order. That's it, now it's in the right order. Uh, this formatting, we talked about this, we need to put back, put back the formatting the way it was. Now, there is um, another thing that we need to do, is to, but that's, that's quite simple. So if you don't want to have to reformat this, this group of tasks, you can just select uh, those tasks here. Just select those. Um, what you need to do is you need to create a rule that is based on the data bars. So when you do this, then it's all good. Um, it goes back to, to the light blue when, um, when, even when the, the task is in progress. But there's still something that um, I don't like. I don't like the fact that uh, there is still some grid on this. So this is something that we need to do. We need to go back to conditional formatting and we need to make sure that this uh, rule is applied above. So here we shouldn't see the, the green name. Now there is also a challenge with this is, and, and I'll show you what with an example, like, like all the percentage complete, completed here are 70%. So, so, and therefore that uh, Excel thinks that 70% is the maximum that we want to show, but we don't want 70% to be the maximum. What we want is we want 100% to be at the maximum. So what I have created here is I'm creating two fields, min percentage and max percentage. So to, to tell Microsoft, yeah, this is the, the minimum and this is the maximum. And when I select that, that rule here, when I manage the rule, I can tell them these two fields here are also part of my assessment. Uh, and I go back here and I say 0% and 100%. Yeah, that you should take those into account. And therefore now this one is 100%. Um, but these are only 70% so that we don't want them all, all to be shown. So let's check if 100% is showing good. Yes, showing good. And that's it. So obviously, I mean, that would be simpler if you had only one group of tasks. Now we've decided to have two task groups. I don't think you, you would need to have two of those. Usually you have just one group of tasks. So therefore that you, you would have to, to do this uh, uh, these thing, specific things for that line here. So the last thing that uh, I want to do is, uh, you know, I chose one of the uh, specified value, but I would like to have it the same color of this because it make it consistent. This is a color that we've decided will show when, you know, this is the color here. We decided to show when the task is in progress. So I will edit that rule and I will just check another color, which is 
the third one from the top and it will all be all nice and consistent with this. Now I just need to make sure that this also goes back to completed. So I go back here and I say stop if true. That's it. Now regarding those fields here, whether or not you want them shown, um, you know, as usual, what I like to do is I go to data and I like to group them, outline, group, and then I can hide them whenever I want. For the moment, I'm going to leave them, but uh, because we'll need those for the calculation, but I'm just going to hide them here. So that's it. So the formatting for this is completed. Now going back to our resourcing tab. So this is where we'll be doing some calculation to allow us to show the, the graphs on the, on the other tab. So the first thing we need to calculate is for each resource, how many tasks they have. Now, in order to do this, we need to check first if that uh, there is something here. So if this, this field here is uh, not blank, I mean, there's several ways to, to check this, but this is the one way you just has different blank. Then what we need to do is a count if, count if of the resource range that we had before and the condition to count it is obviously if the this is the same resource so if this is a resource in this field here which is b4 so we drag that down and now what we have is we have false here so when there's no resource so something we can do is just put a, a blank here and then we drag all this down so this is done for the number of tasks. Next, we calculate the total work in days. So to, to do this, we need to go back to this and calculate this, this uh, not, uh, amount of work required, which is the initial work that has been allocated based on um, the resources day. So in order to do this, we do a sum if. Actually, I could go there so it's a bit clearer. The range that we want to, to use as a selection is the resource name is the same. And as we've seen, we need to do this to make sure that we select this field here. And what is the range to add? It's the required. That's it. So we should have 12 days here and we drag that all the way down and we have some zero here. So this is done. Uh, just in case you're not aware, so it's it in order to refer to another field, I need to, to add called the equal, and I need to concatenate this with a field. So this way, Excel puts all that together and check that there is this field here. Now, for the done field, we leave it as is. Yeah, we need to have this one first. So in order to do this, what do we need to do? I'm just going to copy and paste this and then just change a couple of criteria. So in, or in order to calculate this, instead of calculating the work required, we need to use the work left field here that has already been calculated for us. So we need to make sure that we are talking about the same resource. So we go back to before here, enter, but we are not selecting the work required. We are selecting the work left. Bingo. And then we drag that down. And we have something that uh, is very precise here. So the, what is done, it's more or less what was planned, less what is left to do. This is it's done. OK. So if you don't like those zeros, you can, you can format all this. Uh, you select all this, and then you do a, you do a special formatting, uh, format cells, uh, custom, and uh, I think it's the, the, the H, so that shows nothing. OK, so this is done for these calculations here. So we go back into our calculation tab. Let me copy the headings here. That's it. I'm just doing this. I'm going to view, I remove the grid. I have something about grids. I really don't like them. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to put some things here. Now, for each one of those, we'll have a different criteria, but it's more or less all starting with, uh, with countifs 
first of all, we, ne we need to make sure there is something in the, in us in that name field here. Um, different. So that just confirms that there is nothing in that field, and also that the, the completion um, then is equal to what here zero. Because those 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 are the tasks that are not started. So we, we put zero here. Uh, so I'm just going to drag that down to make it easier. In progress, um, we have a two criteria. It has to be greater than zero. And I'm just going to copy this. And it has to be smaller than one. And then finally, completed. just the one that they are equal to one. So we have uh, 11, 13 tasks here. Here we have 13 tasks. It, lo it all looks okay so far, so good. Now we just need to, to calculate on track, late or red. So what I'll be doing is we take the same, the same calculation here. That gives me a good starting point. The, we don't want blank tasks. We don't want task completed this time. So we say the task must be uh, completion progress must be different from 100%. And we just say the deadline, um, the deadline must be greater than today. So if the deadline is in the future, then we are, we are not late. It makes sense. Uh, greater than the field today here. Okay, now let's uh, grab that down. How do we know if something is, is uh, late? So for this, we, we check that the deadline is, is greater than uh, the red flag. So we're still late, but not too much. Um, so the red flag, red flag date. And then we had the, the, the criteria that we had in the field above, that the deadline needs to be smaller than today. So deadline was in the past. We are late, but we are not yet too late. So that's it. That's done. Now we are left with the red. So red, how many red do we have? Task different blank, task not completed. The deadline is smaller or equal. I want to see the red flag date. And the deadline is um, smaller than today. So we have four, two, five. So the, we will be using these fields uh, to do our graphs at the next screen. Now let's add some charts, some fun charts. So the first one, just select those three. We put insert and then we have the recommended chart or the donut. We need to find the donut somewhere. Uh, what we do is we add data labels. That's it. And what we want to do is to right click on it and do format data labels. And this is where you can check what you want to put in, in uh, on the format. Uh, category name. Yes, you want to remove the value. Yes, or you want to add them after. So completed free. So that's completely up to you how you how you format those. Uh, I like to have them outside like this. And yeah, you can. Uh, I would like to remove the legend. If it's here, that's a bit of a duplication. Um, what I like to do is to have the same color, obviously, as here. So not started free, not started here. So you go here and then you, you, you select the field that you like and try and get the same color, for instance. So it doesn't show much here, but when we have a, a dark background, it will, it will show in progress. Um, you can feel directly here. I think this is this uh, in progress. No, in progress, I have this one. And then completed, same thing. Completed. Uh, I think this is the one we have. OK. So uh, I, and, and then we do the same. I don't want to spend too much time on this because it's just formatting that uh, once you get the gist of it and, I, and then you do the same with the other one, we go in, insert donut, uh, same process, click on it, um, add data label, then format data label. You can choose what you want here. Uh, the series, no, it's a category name. 
So that's it. And then you can do the same with the color. So I'll do that offline. I will, I will change the same color and then uh, prepare things a little bit. So there's not much learning in this. And then we'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put that back on the other tab. Next, we do the graph on the resource workload, just to give us an idea. So in order to do this, we can select just the resource that we have, if we want, or we can just uh, select more. So if we have more resources that come into play, um, we can show them as well. They will show. And then we select the two last column, the done and the left to do. And we enter the chart. So we have uh, several charts here. The chart that, that we need to choose is this one here with the two sets of data uh, on the same vertical. So this is it, we have it. Um, so as, as for, for the others, I like to be consistent with color. I mean, red, I show maybe red as something that is left to be done and as green as something that has been completed. So green here. So what I do now is I, I, I cut it and I paste it here. So now I think I'm going to change the resolution of my screen so I can show you more how, how all that fits in. But um, from that point on, we really have the, the basic, we have done it all more or less. Uh, this is it. So if you're really not fussy with um, <laughs> with with formatting, you can stop here. Uh, if you're just interested in a, in the raw data, now let's get started with formatting. So I think the the um, the trend at the moment is to have some dark themes. So what I like to do is just put everything in a very deep blue here. So this is a very deep blue here. Um, I just either go around here so this one stands out or I'll just uh, format it later on but I put everything in here very dark blue that's it I mean I could put it here but here there's something else up you know I could put it here blue already if uh, you want a bit of a shortcut um, uh, something that um, I don't know if I mentioned but you know this this type of table here doesn't have the black surrounding it has more the, the white borders so here you can do the same. You just go here, uh, you, you select cells, format cells, and at the border, you choose the white. And then you make sure you click on this and on this. So that will give you white borders. And then you apply the formatting. You apply this here, the light blue again. If you want to show this one in red, obviously you can as well. Now what we need to do next is look, go back to those chart, click on the charts and put a format on the chart, format here, shape fill, we need to put no fill so we can see through. So it doesn't look very good at the moment because what we need to do is we need to change the font to white. Okay. I'll be doing this as well while I'm at it actually. Format, shape, fill the same, see through, see through, font, white, font, white. Now what we do next is we go back to this and we go on home and the, the, the text, I like to put it like this, so this way that um, gives you a little bit more room. And we need to provide a little bit more room to this make it a little bit bigger and the chart title we I like to put uh, complement complementary color if you want to call it this way uh, format shape fill a bit of this one I think uh, I need probably a bit of maybe a smaller font voila shape effect text effects a bit of shadow here um, to this. Okay, now this is better. So I put resource resource workload, and then I select this. I go to my brush to copy the format, and I apply it on this. 
uh, it doesn't take it all but um, it should now this one there copy on this all right so what do we have here we have the task completion and here we have the active task status so this is quite important when you have some tasks that are active the tasks that are completed dead then you're not as interested but um, the, the one that are active you you usually want to keep an eye on those now this we need to make sure to do a bit of fine tuning to make sure that there is no overlap um, looks like this one has a border that we need to change for my chat area the border I need to put it in white here i want to remove the border of this so i'll go to format chat area a border no line remove same here remove there you go so now we just uh, we just need to to tidy that up more or less uh, as usual i want to remove my grids um, what we can do is also uh, you know, I group some some tasks here. Maybe I'm gonna have to ungroup them because I've added more. I'm going to data. I ungroup them, but I want to group those ones, the ones that are not here. Uh, I don't really want to show them, so I hide them. That's it. Um, so this is starting to look a little bit better. Um, I don't really like this. Uh, the, those. borders here so i'm just going to put no border um, and here i'm going to do the same no border okay now this for instance you could put it bold maybe you, you just need to to separate them a bit just a little bit of what you can do is you can put also this in white So from that point on, I suppose it's um, it's a, m a matter of taste. Um, we all have sp specific views on this. Now the last thing that uh, I wanted to do is to add some some icons, just to fill in the blank with the resourcing. It's obviously not mandatory, but uh, if you look at people here, I'm sure you'll find something. Um, how many did I have? Yeah, those those one, those four here. I just put them back here. They are all white, so I put them white here, and um, I can add a little bit of a, a, a reflection on it. Um, but the the reflection is too far for me; it doesn't really make sense. So what you have to go, to go to do is you have to go to crop graphite for mine, crop it. So I've noticed that if when you crop it, then it puts the <laughs> it puts the shadow just under so if you really if you really fussy so you can have this the size you want um, it's a nice way to fill the gap and then if you have more resource then you can remove it or as we mentioned we can just have the selected field here so this is pretty much it I mean obviously we need to to align all those fields here so it's always better when they are neatly aligned and we just have one last thing to do is to put the overall project completion um, status here so in order to do this we go back to our resourcing tab we calculate the total of all these fields uh, let me just initially copy the, the format and after we call this total then we just make the sum of all those fields so we don't need all those fields but um, I'm just gonna do it all anyway so the percentage uh, project completion is more or less the ratio of what is done vs what has not been done so we just select the done and the left to do we go insert and then we select the type of representation i'll just going to go for this type of chart this time so when i'm here i need to do a few things and um, i would like to format it a little bit so what i will be doing i will be just first of all just remove the the field so i just want it to be transparent and um, i will be removing these two notions here and then here i will be clicking on the chart and i will be adding data label 
and what I will be doing is the format format data label and then instead of having value I will put percentage so now I will have my percentage here and I will have my percentage here or I can uh, just leave it inside it might even be better so now what I can do is I can put a project uh, status completion project completion and then I can what I like to do is to explode uh, the pie for this so I just uh, click on it and under the series option formatting here I can choose the how much I explode it and I take 20% uh, for instance and then um, I would like to have the the borders a bit thicker so it stands out uh, just first of all I make sure that the borders are white and then I just increase until I'm satisfied oh that might be a bit too much okay and I put the font black in back in white and I put it in bold so okay um, last thing I do is I put that into be consistent green what is completed is green and what is not been completed I'll put it in in light blue as I had the the rest so now it doesn't look like much so let's let's uh, cut the chart and uh, let's just paste it here Maybe much smaller than this now I realize that my okay so I realize that my the border of my of my chart are a bit too big I will just put uh, this in white project completion like this I'll bold it maybe a bit smaller and then um, I will need to get rid of the border of the of the overall chart here okay so this doesn't really work I need to put a um, thinner in a border and and I think that um, I need something a bit a bit more aggressive as far as the green is concerned so I'm just going to put a nice fat green like this and for this I need to put um, for the other one to make sure I select it uh, oh, well, that's it I need to put something uh, maybe gray like that okay so I think that I can leave the font quite big so it's very no noticeable percentage so we have 45% and now if we just want to do a quick check if you put this one at 100% completion and that, that changes the, the thing so it seems to be working so it just need to be a bit of uh, that's it fine-tuning here doesn't look too bad okay so that's it for that let me know you know you can download this from from the description there's a link there and if you have any queries any questions just just let me know and uh, let me know which type of um, of of excel you would like to have i'm going to do a lot of excel on project management and the like this is this is uh, what this site is about if you're interested subscribe of course like comment as i say and then I'll see you in the next video hopefully